Hello everyone, my name is Alec Jindal and I'm going to present our work MacPy, where our goal is to have Python at speed and scale using the cloud backends. This is a joint work with several of my colleagues at Microsoft from different teams and also our awesome intern Marlene uh, from the University of Washington. So we are seeing two interesting trends. One, Python has become the de facto language for ad hoc analysis. Especially the Pandas Data Frames API is highly popular for doing data science. However, it's a challenge to scale and to get, uh, to get good performance out of Python. On the other hand, the cloud has become the destination for hyperscale performance. And there are like, like a large number of SQL based processing backends for achieving high performance and efficiency. And in fact, modern enterprises are already expected to have the data on the cloud. So the question which we ask ourselves is that, can we combine these two together for having good performance with Python? If you look at the current landscape, there are two kinds of efforts to improve the performance with Python. On one side, people are trying to extend the Python ecosystem with newer backends, for example, uh, like Task and Ray, with newer kinds of data layer, for example, Arrow, and with newer kinds of APIs, which are often extensions of pandas, uh, However, all of these tools often end up being in silos, which is each one of them having their own backends and own APIs, for instance. On the other side, uh, people are trying to extend the SQL databases, where people are trying to have embed SQL and Python via UDFs, or they're trying to have SQL extensions for doing uh, preparation, um, training, or inference using SQL-like language. And on top, there are efforts to combine these multiple tools together. Examples, Modin, Koalas, and Ibis. However, Modin and, and Koalas don't speak to the SQL backends and Ibis does not have a Pandas API. So we can see that the current landscape is highly like a fragmented jungle. We, want to, we, really, want to, we really want to simplify this uh, jungle. And our aim is to, is to uh, let people have the familiar Python surface and to also let them uh, write their programs in using Pandas. But we want, to, uh, we want them to leverage all of these cloud backends, which are highly efficient and scalable. And the way we want to achieve is by having a middleware, which does three things. First, we want to batch pandas into large query expressions as compared to you know, having them evaluated eagerly. Second, we want to uh, second, uh, uh, select the backends uh, using the past workloads on the cloud. And third, we want to cache commonly seen data frames. In the remaining of the talk, I will try, I'll um, go over each of these, uh, but for more details, please have a look at our paper. Okay, how do we batch pandas together? Well, uh, we start from using the IBIS tool and we add on top of IBIS a pandas layer, which, which lazily translates the pandas statements into IBIS expressions. What this means is that given a pandas program, for example, here's an example program, which computes the number of taxi trips per week. We take each of its statements and lazily construct a large IBIS expression or a SQL-like expression until we find the sync statement, for example, a print or output. Right. And once we have this kind of expression, we now want to push it down to various scalable cloud backends. And fortunately, IBIS already has support for a bunch of different backends. For example, Postgres and MySQL. We added support for a couple more, uh, namely SQL, DW, and Scope for speed and scale. And now we can take the same program, which was in, originally in Pandas, and compile it down to T-SQL and generate a SQL DW data warehouse execution plan. Alternatively, we can take the same program and using PyScope, we can generate a scope script and then run as a scope execution plan on the scope clusters. So the same pandas program can run in various different scalable and efficient cloud backends. Right. And if you do all of that, uh, we compare the performance of um, running the same pandas program in SQL data warehouse versus pandas. And we see that uh, as we increase the input size, the speed ups could be significant up to 20x. Likewise, if we increase the query complexity by increasing the number of joins, we can see uh, hundreds of times of speed up. 
And this happens because by pushing them down into this uh, highly efficient backend, we are we are essentially leveraging more advanced query optimizers and more optimized uh, operator implementations. Likewise, we can uh, scale the pandas, uh, the same pandas program from gigabytes to terabytes using the scope engine. And interestingly, we found that as we scale on uh, large clusters, uh, we can, if we choose scope or spark, it depends. If we, for small input sizes, spark wins, whereas for large input sizes, scope actually wins more. So the choice of these uh, backends actually has to be carefully uh, considered. And this leads to our next topic. How do we select the backend using the past workloads? And for doing that, we added in IBIS uh, extra backend selection module, uh, which takes the IBIS expression and applies cost plus optimization uh, to pick the most efficient uh, backend for that IBIS expression. And the way it works is that we leverage past workloads from the cloud, which we have enough. And we learn decision trees to pick the most efficient uh, for that uh, specific uh, expression, which means at compile time, given the available backends, we can infer the most uh, efficient one. And this is important because we often have these kinds of questions where people ask, for example, when should I switch to a cluster? So how, when should I switch from local execution using pandas to using PySpark inside a cluster or vice versa, right? So we ran a large number of experiments to um, address this question. And we came up with this kind of a decision tree where we have in the nodes, various operations and input sizes. And on the leaves, we have the final efficient um, backend. We can see on the left, we have the, uh, we can see that pandas is more efficient. On the right, PySpark is more efficient. In between, uh, either are equally good. And the thing we observe is that if we had, had uh, chosen pandas for this uh, smaller, uh, uh, smaller sized workloads, you could actually significantly speed up those computations by up to 84% as the median improvement. So we can see that a careful choice of these backends can actually lead to significant improvements. Likewise, we have also have this question in Cosmos, which has now both Scope and the Spark as the query engine, and which one should people use for data science? Again, we ran a large number of experiments, and we found that uh, we can have a decision tree like this, where we can have operators, and we can have different operations and input sizes as, as the nodes. And on the leaves, we can have the decision. And for small inputs, if you pick Spark, you could actually pick significantly faster and save significant resources, right? And these trees uh, did not be static. They can evolve over time as the workloads change. But the important thing is that, that by having an automated approach to build these trees and to use them inside IBIS uh, for uh, automatically picking the backend really helps the data scientist. Lastly, let's look at the common cache and see how we can kind of cache the frequently appearing data frames. And for that, before uh, the IBIS expression is being fed to a backend selection module, we apply a data frame cache where, we, where the intent is to make it more interactive experience. And the way it works is that uh, we generate unique signatures for every IBIS expression, and we store repeated data frames in Arrowflight server. And in case of a cache hit, we altogether uh, skip hitting the backend altogether. And with this, uh, when we apply this, uh, we can have actually significant improvements depending on the different scenarios. For example, if we cache inputs or the, the final results. And uh, all this indicates that it's, it's really helpful to have a more interactive experience. To summarize overall, I think um, Python has become really the lingua franca for many analysis. And pandas and data frames are appearing more and more as a standardized APIs. At the same time, people have hyperscale performance cloud and they, they already have data on the cloud. And they also have poly engine environments where it's very easy to, to switch engines. And so in MacPy, our goal is to help people to write pandas without regret which means they can write their programs once and execute them anywhere. This also means we are trying to abstract the data processing complexity, something which they are not really uh, expert at. With that, thank you for listening. To learn more about our lab, please see our website. And yes, we are hiring for interns. Thank you. <laughs>